What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 5 of my Total War Warhammer 2 modded Vlad von Karstein campaign. So as we saw last time, the undead swarmed the passes and the peaks in a tide of rotting flesh, and soon the Slayer King's clan was no more. Even as the undead marched, the Greenskins, sensing their opportunity, sought the hollowed out mountain holds, laying siege to Zuffbar and Karakadrin, but ultimately being thrown off the walls by their new dark denizens. With the pathetic Greenskins presenting no real threat, Vlad and Isabella von Karstein began the return journey to their homeland of Sylvania, but not before sending a delegation to the beleaguered Dowie at the Silver Road. Where was the Empire when the West Holds fell, they asked the Dowie. Where was the Empire when their enemies closed in about them? The silver tongues of the Night Court's diplomats bore fruit. Thorgrim Grudgebearer, High King of the Dwarfs, in seeking the good of his people above even his own honor, decided to break with tradition. Karazakarak would stand with the Vampire Counts, would back Vlad as the new Emperor if they would but march against the abomination of Clan Ferric. And so the pact was sealed, honoring vows made, the shambling legions of dead turned instead to the Ratmen. Though the men of the Empire may remain willfully blind to the nature of this menace, the memory and knowledge of, the vamp of their vampiric cousins is long, and something even dwarfs could grudgingly praise. Upon the destruction of the Vermintide at Kragmir, Vlad marched once more to burn out the nest at the lost hold of Karag Dromar and break the upstart clan Ferric for good. Or something along those lines anyway. So this time we're obviously going to try to attack Kyreg Dromar. I don't know if it'll be a field battle or a, a settlement battle. Really depends on if, uh, well I guess we'll attack the settlement, but we don't know if there's a wall there, right? So uh, it could be a siege, could be a field battle, but regardless of what it is, we do not have Isabella nearby and therefore we're going to need to, I guess, skill Vlad's Wind of Death, because otherwise we have no offensive magic. So yeah, we might as well use it. Uh, it'll be a l it'll mean a little less uh, stuff that we can put into his uh, uh, his unique line that we've been saving points for. But it is what it is. Without uh, Isabella here, uh, that's a problem. Now you've also leveled yes. up, and we should get you Deathly Vigor, I guess. Yeah, you know what? That's pretty good. Uh, Deathly Vigor will allow you to march stance close to Karak Dromar. Although, wait, what if we go here? Maybe we don't even need to march stance. I do wonder. Mm, you know what? This will probably mean a little bit less money gained over the next turn. Yeah, but it's, like, it's not significant. Yeah, so let's try that, and then maybe we'll attack. We'll also probably summon another dead unit uh, with Vlad von Karstein before we attack, just to try to get another unit of zombies killed and increase the amount of casualties here, because that is, after all, going to be our goal, to get another one of these battle markers, hopefully about 10k, uh, depending on what's in this particular settlement. We'll see. We shall see. In addition to that, you might notice one thing that I did between the episodes. Our blood kisses are now down to zero. Based on a comment in the uh, previous couple of episodes, uh, I decided that we would get the... Uh uh, that we would get the von Karstein a lord uh, just to get the two free Sylvanian crossbowmen uh, to be added to the pool. One, because Vlad is about to power them up. Uh, but two, uh, because we just keep getting attacked at Zuffbar and Karakadrin, and it's not always going to be guaranteed that we will be able to throw the enemies off without upgrading these settlements, and Isabella can't handle them both. Uh, she can only handle one of them. And ideally this one, because she can just go, go back and forth between uh, sacking Kragmir and building our rep with various factions and then killing the rebellions at Zuffbar, making us money. But then nobody's close enough to Karakadrin, where we could summon our new uh, uh, von Karstein lord, uh, Dieter von Karstein, who got the skill of veteran, which is, it's, it's a decent one. We got Hold the Line, uh, which is a constant plus five melee defense and plus five leadership, on top of a stacking plus five leadership for skeletal units for the lord's army, and uh, the Imperial Tactics ability, which is a buff for a, well, I guess it's a single ally, so it's honestly not that big of a deal. Uh, but it's something. It's something. I actually wanted to try to do a sort of save scum thing, uh, which I pretty much never do on any campaign, but I really like themed armies, so I was trying to do this. So I reloaded this and tried to uh, get this lord up like five like five times in a row, and every single time he got veteran. So either I'm doing something wrong, or bloodlines have a seed, and uh, you can't actually change that. Or, or either that, or I'm really, really unlucky and just got veteran five times in a row. Uh, you guys let me know about that, how you feel about me doing that sort of thing. Not that it 
it helped in this particular situation. I just felt like uh, like we want to build an all ghoul army, so uh, uh, we want we'll want a Striga ghoul king that uh, buffs ghouls. We'll want a necromancer that buffs well, I guess skeletons, probably not uh, zombies because we already have. Uh, uh, we already have Isabella's cousin here to buff zombies, and so on and so forth. We're gonna want various different types of armies uh, themed out, right? What I really wanted here was a uh, uh, was a von Karstein lord that specifically buffed Sylvanian crossbowmen, like Vlad does, because Vlad's endgame army is gonna primarily have a lot of uh, uh, blood knights as well as some other stuff, but he does buff mortal levies quite significantly with that 30% uh, increase to range and missile strength. So we probably do want to get him at least some of them, other where. Uh, Otherwise, we're not benefiting from it at all. Although, yeah, we really need to increase the numbers that we get. Anyway, I digress. You guys let me know how you feel about uh, uh, trying that and how it works with regards to reloading and trying to get different uh, traits on these lords. Hmm. Very weird that it came up to be veteran five times in a row. Oh, well. Regardless, uh, we are going to end this turn unless there's something that I forgot, and I don't think I did. Uh, there's some settlement upgrades available. We're not going to spend any more cash right now because we're going to attack Eric Dromar, and we need to summon units uh, to get killed next turn anyway. So, end the turn. Uh, unless I'm forgetting something. I don't think I am. Let's go. Alrighty, what do we have here? What will the dwarves do? Will they continue losing territory? Most likely. Ooh, clan moors and the bloody hands are fighting. Probably a good thing uh, that the bloody hands will fight them instead of uh, instead of attacking Karazakarak. Oh, hello. Speaking of Karazakarak, looks like the red fangs want to attack them. I don't know exactly where the red fangs are, and I'm not sure I give a damn about this. So let's just enter war inside of that. Really? <laughs> and <laughs> Okay, okay, well, it looks like we just got into two more wars, but at least the dwarves will like us a little bit more for honoring our treaties. Let's just hope that uh, they don't immediately break away. I feel like the dwarves in particular should have a... Whoa, 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 united against us bloody spears. Oh, wow, we just got into wars with uh, three green greenskin tribes. Okay, well, that just changed my plan. Oh, and there's a Dwarf Rebellion here. Okay, this completely and utterly changed my plan. Okay, so this is what we're going to do instead. I was going to say, summon the new guy here at Karak Jin. We're instead going to march Isabella here to fight the Dwarves, since we can no longer summon here. And then we're going to use our new Lord to defend Zuffbar. Fine. Uh, with a pair of his new uh, uh, free Sylvanian crossbowmen. Although, I just... You know what? I don't think these guys can reach us in a single turn, can they? Yeah, I don't think they can. I don't think they can. Therefore, uh, we will summon them next turn so as not to waste our cash. Ooh, and our cash is definitely dropping. Now, Vlad, you're going to summon yourself. Ooh, you know what? Wait, uh, if you go into Necromantic Ritual... You know, wait, do you... Hmm. I actually don't know. I was about to say, if we go into Necromantic Ritual, do we actually lose all of our movement points? Or can we go back to uh, stats? You know what? I'm not going to risk it. We'll try it out later when we uh, when we don't have to move this very turn. So let's summon a zombie unit uh, to get killed on the walls. Then we will attack Herod Dromar here. Uh, let's see if this is a siege or a... Oh, it looks like it's a siege. Okay. Uh, settlement uh, has... Ooh. And they've got some decent uh, units on the field. Huh. Okay, well, this will be a lot more interesting. They have a bunch of gutter runners, uh, a lot more shielded clan rats than Skaven slaves, so it should be a little bit tougher than the uh, than the previous battles. All right, all right. At least it'll probably ensure that all of our zombies die. And uh, now yes, you, can you get in range or can you not? I, oh, it looks like you just short. I think she's just short. She can get into range of this guy. I think I can't tell which circle is which. Uh, Okay, so I think this circle is the Lord. Oh, and then that means this circle must be... I actually don't know. Yeah, actually, I think you are in range. At least I hope so. So let's send you up here. Uh, do we want to maybe summon the Tithe? Face of Death summons a unit of zombies. Oh, swell. Wait, is that bound? No. Why can you summon a unit of zombies? Oh, it's probably because you're in uh, our own territory, right? Because Vlad doesn't have this. Uh, yeah, you know what? Let's summon the Tithe. Uh, we're going to power them up because you buff up zombies and they're going to be your uh, your units, so you might as well. And then we'll move right here in the hopes that we can indeed do what I'm thinking. Really hope this doesn't fail and then she can't help us. And do this. 
All right, perfect, perfect. Alrighty, well, because she has perfect vigor, we can send her up the walls and uh, help the uh, Vargeist, so that'll be nice. We just gotta make sure that uh, uh, she doesn't get surrounded by a bunch of storm vermin up there, although I think a single unit of storm vermin will still get uh, erect by Vargeist. So anyway, let's get to it. This is gonna be a cinematic battle, although before we launch this, and uh, this is something I have to explain at the start of every single campaign, uh, I like to uh, uh, remind you guys to uh, drop the likes and comments and stuff like that every fifth episode in the series so uh, this is uh, that time and uh, the uh, matter before us is the fact that uh, the scheduling and the time uh, of each episode i.e. Uh, the length of each episode is dependent on engagement and all that sort of stuff so don't forget to drop your likes and comments if you've been enjoying this particular let's play and want to see Vlad around here on the regular and updated at his current schedule alrighty enough of that let's get to it cinematic battle time another siege let's get all these zombies killed as well uh, let's hope it all works out Alrighty, here we go. The battle against Clan Ferric and with much more elite units than we have thus far encountered uh, from the Skaven. I think I can promise one thing and that is that it should be a fun battle uh, by virtue of the fact that our goal here is to get about 10,000 casualties and kill off all of our zombies. So we're gonna send them up the walls. Uh, it'll actually It'll actually be a straight up assault. In the meantime, obviously our Vargeists are gonna go in first. Oh, it looks like they caught out a unit of Skaven Slaves all by themselves. <laughs> Selves, Skaven Slave Slingers in particular. And uh, they got ripped apart pretty quick. Ooh, and there's the Warp Bomb. I had not been paying attention before, and I didn't realize that the faction had the Warp Bomb. Fortunately, the Vargeists are not super affected by it, only taking about, I don't know, maybe 20% damage. And that is an amount of damage that they can heal up, but it is also a skill scary thought. Uh, if uh, if that had done more damage, it would have been very bad. Imagine losing your uh, all three of your elite Vargeist to a sudden warp bomb. <laughs> Always gotta pay attention to when the enemy uh, uh, the enemy has a warp bomb available, and that's what makes Skaven incredibly scary on the defense. Anyway, let's speed it back up, and we should be soon getting ready to assault the walls here. Uh, Vargeist are just gonna fly around. In fact, we can just speed up through this. Now, I did, I did take some time to think about this. I originally thought that maybe what we should do is actually to have the, just send the Vargeists in to kill everything here by themselves. We know that they're most likely capable of it, uh, and more importantly, destroy the Plague Claw Catapult. But then I thought, you know, if our goal is to get our own zombies killed and we're gonna send them up the walls, uh, they can take a lot of damage from the said Plague Claw Catapults, and so will the enemy army. So at the end of the day, our units that are elite are not going to be hurt by the Plague Claw Catapults, and our units that are not elite are supposed to die anyway. So at the end of the day, it's probably better to keep the Plague Claw Catapults alive. If anybody's just wondering why I didn't send the Air Force to deal with them. Alrighty, Vargeist going in. They are very experienced with uh, dealing with with uh, a walled settlements at this point and are going to clean house up here as they usually do. They are immediately dropping down on a unit of uh, Skaven Slave Slingers once again, I believe, but then are going to proceed to attacking the uh, Storm Vermin with a uh, sword and shield. These are relatively elite units after all, and they can't damage them. It's actually an interesting question whether it would be more beneficial to just sort of uh, get all the bar guys set. In fact, I do think, yeah, they're going to move away a little bit. We can wait for the zombies to get here. Ooh, speaking of the zombies, looks like the enemy is going to use some warp lightning cast on our zombies. It looks like it just barely clipped the unit, but otherwise uh, more or less missed it. It looks like it only killed two units. Really lovely effect, though. Uh, we're obviously keeping our quote-unquote elite units back. Direwolves and uh, skeleton spearmen and warriors. I know I know they're not elite elite. It's just that uh, they're not zombies. And uh, they do uh, they do cost like twice as much to revive. So I did want to keep them alive. Alrighty, well, the Vargeists are going to get out there so that they don't get surrounded. They are also getting hit by enemy uh, uh, gutter runners. And gutter runners can actually 
hurt Vargeist pretty badly. Uh, they Vargeist don't have a lot of armor in the first place, but uh, the gutter runners are armor piercing. They do quite a bit of damage, so it's certainly something to be wary of. In the meantime, the zombies are approaching. The Skaven can see uh, the shambling hordes uh, get closer and closer to the walls. I believe Vlad and uh, Katrina Von Dreck should be marching over here as well. There they are. Uh, we can send... We can send Vlad to sort of fight in front of the gate while the other vampire, because of her perfect vigor, can go up the walls and uh, climb ladders and all that sort of stuff, which is very now good to have. Oh, looks like we're going to take a few hits on the Vargeists from those play clock catapults. I'm going to have to get them out of there just so that uh, uh, just so that they stop taking damage to this, as it should really be the zombies that are uh, getting damage there. Oh, looks like another cast of Warp Lightning. Always a very lovely effect, and looks like that one actually hit the middle of the zombies. Beautiful. And uh, we're also having the towers help us out here. Obviously, they're not going to be as effective as the uh, uh, elite rocket towers, but should still be able to kill a decent amount of zombies. Oh, and it looks like their summoned clan rats are going to uh, deal with us. Well, it'll be a war of the summons here, after all, because we do have our own raised dead casts that we can start casting inside the city as soon as we've uh, uh, apparently, according to the comments, gotten walls up on the the, uh, uh, well, gotten ladders up on the wall or otherwise gotten the gate broken through, so. I do appreciate the tip. And we will be making use of it to summon more zombies inside the city. In the meantime, it's zombies versus clan rats, and clan rats should be able to kill zombies fairly easily, as zombies have zero melee defense, or four melee defense, okay, barely any melee defense, uh, as well as a tiny amount of attack, but they're obviously meant to tar pit, unless you have a lord that buffs them a lot. Ah, oh, poor Gorst. Everybody hates Gorse. <laughs> I feel like everybody hates Manny, like, really hates Manny, uh, but uh, Gorst is sort of like, everybody's apathetic to Gorst and just uh, don't care about him. Oh well. Ooh, look at that. Arcing shot from that Plague Claw catapult and it's hitting... Oh, there's a small amount of zombies here. It looks like it uh, uh, knocks apart some of their own ramshackle Skaven construction up here, but uh, doesn't do too much damage to the zombies itself. More hits coming in. Yeah, this is definitely going to hurt the Skaven as well. And woo, Vargas Var come back in, but it looks like the enemy exploded their warp bomb before these guys landed. They were already quite hurt. Uh, oh, they got uh, Howling Warp Gale used on them as well, so with that uh, they can take quite a bit more damage from the enemy gutter runners down here. Definitely gotta watch out for that, but yeah, it looks like that warp bomb actually killed more of the enemy than it did damage to us, so I'm not gonna complain about that one. And there we go, there's that, uh, I guess that's another cast of Howling Warp Gale, or... Hmm. Well, they're still, they're still surrounded about all, with all that lightning. Lots of lightning from the enemy today. Alrighty, and there we go. The zombies are still fighting down there, but the Vargas have more or less cleared the walls. They should... Oh, there's a Grey Seer as well. Uh, they should be able to kill the enemy lords. They are trying to focus down the enemy chieftain and the uh, warlock engineer down here. Which is a pretty good use of them once again. If the enemy puts their lords and heroes up on walls, why not surround them and kill them with Vargas? Where, A, they have a very difficult time running away as they get trapped against the edge of the wall like this. Too bad, like, larger units like this can't just straight up knock living units off the walls. I think they, I think they can knock units off the walls, but only if they're, uh, only if they're dead. I know I've seen units fly off walls before. But I guess it would be kind of obnoxious if you could do that to heroes, right? Alrighty, and we're starting to get unit summons inside the gate as well. There we go. Lots of undead. Uh, there, well, maybe not lots, but a couple of casts is uh, good enough for now. We're also going to start moving up the rest of our army here. We're going to get the Blood Knights ready to attack that gate. We really just need to sort of clear out uh, this portion of the enemy uh, so that we can uh, capture the gate and essentially let our skeleton spearmen and our skeleton warriors inside. More ladders coming up. A wind of death about to go down on this blob. Uh, I... It's, it wasn't probably the best placement, but it did clip fair few units. There we go. Alright, too bad it didn't go even further to uh, hit these, but that's alrighty. All these guys, it looks like, routed from that one cast, and that's not surprising, because that is the nature of the Wind of Death, especially against the weaker units like this. It does more non-armor piercing damage than armor piercing damage, unlike the Pit of Shade, so it is a fairly useful spell against uh, chaff infantry like clan rats and skaven slaves, possibly even more so than the uh, Pit of Shades if they're not blobbed up and are in a nice little line like that. Alrighty, more zombies climb in the walls. Man, I feel like zombies in particular, they should just be like... 
they should just be like climbing the walls themselves with a giant uh, and like a giant horde, like climbing over each other. Especially if you have enough of them. But maybe that's just me. Alright, Vargai's still doing good. Looks like we're gonna take some more kits from the enemy Plague Claw Catapult. Hmm. And I take it some I take it summoned units don't count as casualties. Does anybody know how this works? Like if you summon like uh, uh, ten thousand units worth of zombies and they all get killed, I I would assume that they don't count for the battle marker, but I could be wrong. So I am curious whether we should be summoning more of these guys. So if anybody knows, please do uh, let me know as well. Alrighty, there we go. Our blood knights are also moving in. A nice little uh, uh, double-breasted line. There we go. Or two abreast or whatever. You know what I mean. <laughs> Alrighty, and zombies. Still being summoned. Oh, wow, that uh, Plague Claw shot looks like it killed a lot more of their own units than it did of ours. Uh, there's not even a lot of zombies out here, and then we're going to get the Var guys down here to help out as well. As I said before, we are going to uh, get as many uh, units into this area to capture this gate as possible, because it will take a long time to break through it with just Vlad and the Blood Knights, both of whom I believe are either attacking it or standing outside. Vlad might have been... Vlad might be on the other side of the gate at this point. No, not yet. Not yet, but uh, spoiler alert, he's going to get there eventually, especially if the gates open up again. In the meantime, our Lamian Vampire Lord is up here leading the zombies, uh, which uh, she should be used to, considering she powers up zombies, as well as the Vargeist helping out kill all the uh, all the units up here. Is that another unit of Storm Vermin, the Sword and Shield? Yes, it is, but it isn't for much longer, as it should be dead. I wonder how many more warp bombs the enemy has left as well. This is a really fun battle. I love uh, I love actually using zombies like this, wherein you can actually, you know, send them up the walls and make use of them. Makes it a lot more fun. It feels right, too. And uh, too bad we don't have another reinforcing zombie army, so just like, uh, as, as just like a giant pile of zombies from one side of the map to the other, attacking every single section of the wall. That's what I really want to see. Uh, definitely going to try to make that happen as we go further through the campaign. One of the things that makes the undead feel very good, and one of the reasons one that they're my, f that uh, they are my favorite faction, is the ability to uh, raise dead and therefore not really caring about chaff infantry like this and just being able to send them up the walls. And obviously the same does go for like waz and stuff where it works, but I just think that uh, uh, this works a little bit better. Alright, well done. Vargais stopped right at that line of zombies, and it looks like this portion of the battlefield should be ours fairly soon. The Vargais are not going to have any trouble killing a bunch of clan rats, even if we do run out of uh, the zombie summons here. But the walls have also been pretty much cleared and are now primarily zombie full, and if they are taking shots from uh, enemy play claw catapults, that's just fine. It actually adds to the casualties that we want. Looks like the balance of power is fairly even. Uh, we've lost about 2,000 units of zombies, and the enemy has lost about 3,000 units of clan rats. Interestingly enough, both factions, uh, neither one gives a damn about those sort of losses. And there we go. Vlad has now broken through the gate, although I think it opened because these of these clan rats, and just left him on this side. Uh, it's still not ours, but it will allow Vlad to actually join the fight and lead the hordes to continue attacking here. Oh, the jump on these guys who are trying to run away. Ouch. That's not where you want to run to. Alrighty, looks like this place is just about captured. I think there's only like one or two. No, in fact, I think they're all routing now. All the uh, Skaven slaves and clan rats, so we will capture this. Oh, and it looks like the gatehouse is almost ours there as well. So knowing that that's happening, we are sending in our Iconic Stein uh, stalkers as well as the rest of our skeleton warriors and spears uh, to actually go through the gate and join the fray. Beautiful. I'm just enjoying the sights here. This is absolutely glorious. Oh, and now the gates have opened and the blood lights are... Blood lights? Uh, blood knights are in. Do blood knights use blood lights? <laughs> right I would think so. All right, although maybe they're not so good with the... Uh, uh, with the magic. Uh, or not as good with the magic as Necrox are uh, to, you know be artificers and create something like that. Alrighty, there we go, moving through the rest of the clan rats as they route, and yeah, looks like they're all shattered, and we will create a new sort of a battle line 
here as we move forward. The Vargeists obviously moving up uh, in front together with Vlad. They don't care about enemy artillery shooting them. And uh, yeah, look at this blob. If we had a pit of shades, uh, putting that right there would have just, I think it would have ended the battle here. Well, I mean, they do still have a decent amount of units, so this will allow them to create another battle line, and they do have a, a decent amount of elites back here as well. I don't know if they have more... Oh, there's a chieftain, or I guess that's the chieftain that ran off the walls. There's this unit of rat ogres, and I think there's at least a couple of units of knight or uh, gutter runner, gutter runners here. I could be wrong, hmm. but we'll see. We'll see. We see that there's a gutter runner unit here routing, but I don't remember if more units are routed as well or not. And there's more slingers over there as well, so they could certainly be adding uh, range firepower. Ooh, a unit has been wiped out, so it looks like we lost some zombies there. Beautiful. That's what we want. You are really doomed, like, you're super doomed, guys. For all the zombies that you kill, you haven't really hurt the undead. Like the faction, I mean. And there we go, Blood Knights are in among the Vargeists as well. Starting to lag a little bit, but uh, that's not unexpected in these sorts of battles. Alrighty, and it looks like the Skaven Slaves are running off the field now, and I feel like this portion of the battle line will be just about done. There is still another set of units, including a Storm Vermin unit with Halberds on this side, so after we clear them out here, we will be moving on. I think there's another small battle going on over here between the Konigstein Stalkers and these uh, Clan Rats. They are taking a few hits from the enemy artillery, uh, but uh, you know what? As long as they don't die like this, that's actually probably a good thing. Now the artillery appears to be firing on the Tithe, who we did send in and uh, once again I just wanted them to uh, to take some casualties extra casualties to increase our numbers uh, just got to be careful and make it up to the point where they take enough casualties to you know lose some of their units go down to like half HP but not enough so that they die and uh, disintegrate because we do want to keep the tithe uh, there we go this portion of the battlefield is now firmly in our hands a few of these guys are gonna route but I think we send all of the Vargeists together to hunt them down down and kill them all. And I just also want to point out that this entire battle at uh, 13 minutes now has, I've barely had to use any slow motion, uh, which is also lovely. I uh, gotta really appreciate these sort of battles uh, where you don't have to slow it down so much because uh, they're over in like two minutes. Makes it a lot more fun as well. Yeah, Vargas menacingly hovering over and uh, picking up any uh, uh, stray clan rats to feed on. There we go. Now these guys are just going to group up. Uh, our dire wolves are actually also in. Finally getting some use out of them in an actual siege as opposed to only field battles. Well done, little guys. You good, you good undead doggos. Alrighty, and these clan rats will obviously uh, route. I mean, they're not going to be able to fight our uh, skeletons all that much, even with them having been damaged by the enemy artillery. Now we're moving on to fight these uh, enemy storm vermin and clan rats that are left on this side. Wait, actually, I don't see the storm vermin. Huh. The Storm Vermin, their elite units, I guess, backed off. They didn't want any of that. Well, that actually makes sense. We've, uh, uh, we, I've definitely read books uh, about Skaven where the uh, more elite units essentially backed off, leaving the Skaven slaves and the clan rats to cover their retreat, which is very much Skaven. Ooh, and Vlad is up front here together with, uh, uh, with the other Vampire Lord. I like how they sort of clear a space around them with their uh, splash attacks. Oh, yeah. And I also think, ah, here we go. The enemy chieftain is coming in. Maybe he senses an opportunity to end the vampires for good by killing Vlad. Uh, but, uh, you know, I have a feeling that that's not going to work out so well. Uh, he's trying to move through right there, trying to get to our own uh, heroes, while the Blood Knights, uh, using the zombies for a meat shield, uh, just break apart the enemy. In the meantime, I believe the Vargais have, yeah, they've driven off this entire portion of uh, clan rats and other routing units that were coming back. So so that we are just left to this sort of one area in the battlefield. Beautiful. A really fun siege. I'm really enjoying this one. Alrighty, there we go. And it looks like their chieftain has come in and he does want to duel Vlad. Oh, look at him looking up at Vlad. Poor little guy. He's, he's not going to have a good time here. And I think with just like that, did he just rout? <laughs> yeah, he just routed. Took a uh, took a kick to the snoot from uh, from Vlad. It's just like, nope, no, never mind, never mind. That's not going to happen. <laughs> oh man. 
Alrighty, and Vlad's basically at full HP at that, and I think so are the uh, the uh, Blood Knights as well. Uh, zombies really did uh, did pay for themselves here, both by causing casualties or becoming casualties, and by acting as meat shields for our elites. And that's why uh, that's why the humble zombie is one of my favorite units in the game. Alrighty, there we go. These guys are probably not going to be around for much longer. We just need to cripple their morale. Uh, how are the Var guys doing back there? Oh, looks like they're done on this portion of the map. The enemy... Oh, that's why they moved the Storm Vermin. Uh, they wanted to attack the Var guys and surround them by applying those uh, uh, applying those anti-large halberds, but unfortunately for them, the Var guys got out. Uh, uh, took a few parting shots from the enemy's slingers. Actually, it looks like they missed every single shot, but... <laughs> With that, I believe they're going to land once more into the blob here. And with the flanking attacks, plus the Lord here, plus the army losses, these clan rats are all going to ride. There we go. There we go, and we can watch the balance of power. They're down by about 7,000 rats by now. And true, we have lost over 3,000 of our own zombies, but hey. I feel like that's perfectly fine. And there we go, this portion of the enemy is now ready to rout. And only the elites that were hiding and protecting their Plague Claw Catapults are left. Speaking of the Plague Claw Catapults, at this point in the game, they have actually run out of ammunition. We essentially, uh, we, we went for the... Uh, uh, we went for the Zap Brannigan strategy. We, we with waves uh, with wave after wave of our own disposable minions, uh, and uh, they ran out of ammunition, or their kill count went uh, <laughs> uh, rolled over. So there we go, and it all worked out. <laughs> I actually wish, ironically, in this particular situation, that they still had ammo, because we could have pr probably taken a few more casualties to our skeleton warriors and our skeleton spearmen. Yeah, they did get damaged. The tie, they're at about half HP, but they uh, like they're still at 150 out of 200 units out of 220 units so ironically it's kind of unfortunate that uh, uh, they decided to keep units rather than uh, lose units instead of HP but uh, and same same goes for the various skeleton wars and these two skeleton spearmen are relatively unharmed mostly because they moved in after the uh, skeleton warriors doggos chasing off anything else that's over here oh there are the skin safe slingers and storm are still alive over there but uh, you know I don't think it's gonna matter very much Considering, considering none of our elites are hurt, and I think the uh, the Vargas have actually healed. They do tend to do that because of their uh, healing abilities when they're in melee, and uh, well, uh, with the exception of this one, I think they have more HP uh, than they did after they uh, did their little flyby over here. Bounce of power is now definitely on our side, and ooh, yeah, the Skaven are about even in terms of troops with us, and when you're Skaven and you're even with another faction, you're probably losing. Unless it's very late game and you have some like uh, uh, some ridiculous army where you're not lo using a lot of uh, clan rats or skaven slaves, but that is probably going to be your second army anyway, at least for it to feel right. Anyway, with that, I think the battle is just about over. A few more units of these are going to rout. Uh, we have these guys running around while we move up the, our skeleton spearmen to sort of block them off while the var guys can hit them in the back. But if we speed this up for a few seconds. Considering that there are no other units, so there we go. There's the chain rat. Unfortunately, the rest of their units refused to fight this. They did not decide to commit their rat ogres, and uh, it looks like the rest of their gutter runners here are also not going to be able to achieve much. Fortunately, oh, and their main lord was here as well, but we did kill both lords and heroes up on the wall, so I think that's perfectly fine. As well as several units of storm vermin, with this one exception that they kept in reserve. <laughs> Poor AI, those army losses sure were uh, telling. Alrighty, and it is a Pyrrhic victory for us in theory, uh, but in practice it is obviously uh, not a Pyrrhic victory at all, because we were just trying to lose those zombies, and we don't care about them, we can raise them uh, at any point. We're like, let's see how much damage we did. I mean, considering the amount of casualties, it should be a lot. And, ooh, did we or did we not get to 10k? Alrighty, let's see about the losses. Man, it still didn't break that uh, 10k. I should have tried to sacrifice a few more of these uh, skeleton units, I guess, and I did. It just, uh, 
and it just didn't quite work out. They, they broke a little bit earlier than I expected, but still we got a very decent amount of casualties uh, in there at the very end. Not quite to 10k, but uh, a bit close to it. The Vargas obviously cleaned house as they usually do. Uh, seven, between eight, 70 and 90,000 damage on them. Uh, two of them basically got 90 and one of them got 75 for some reason. I guess you were fighting some uh, more elite units, but uh, that is a ton of kills. Uh, we did manage to get most of our zombies killed. One of them only uh, rose from the dead. And at 25%, that's a little bit surprising. It's uh, kind of unlucky. We will have to resummon them, but at least for a turn, we'll be getting more cash. Uh, so we'll do this. We will sack the place for, you know, getting our cash back. Uh, sack it. Nice. And let's see, that battle marker is at 9... Uh, let's see. Now, oh, wait, but sacking it is a problem because... Actually, no, it's not a problem. I was about to say, it's going to be a problem because they'll just uh, get the stack back in there, but we can just come back in and auto-resolve it next turn. It does still have walls, but it is no longer level 3, and therefore not going to be nearly as problematic. More importantly, Vlad leveled up to level 12. Therefore, we're going to get a Cloud of Horror immediately into Mortal... Uh, levies for that plus 40% with the Empire, or 40 uh, rep rather with the Empire. And now the question is what we want. Uh, basically everything in here is really good. Uh, I was going to go straight for Coven of Undeath to get everybody leveling up, but I feel like uh, getting a free Vortex to damage more enemies, especially while Isabella's magical support is uh, not here with her vampires, might be a little bit more valuable. Oh wait, no, this is only target of flying. Ah, no, okay, well then that is kind of pointless. Well then, let's just go Kevin of Undeath. Mesmerizing War is also pretty good. Uh, and then I guess next turn we'll go Monstrous Strength. To, at the very least, it'll uh, somewhat buff up the uh, uh, Vargeist. Not that they really need it, but they've been doing a great job, so uh, might as well give them some reward. And there we go, we got ourselves another Empire Spy as well, uh, out of that Imperial Administration. Now with the two bonuses to Imperial Reputation combined, we're heading to positive. Uh, we're even heading to positive with Sterling, which is kind of surprising. And uh, yeah, the other Empire Spy will be a useful income from sacking settlements for Vlad, that's swell. Uh, looks like Draika is still alive. How are you for our... Hmm. You know what, I'm not gonna do a defensive alliance with you, as long as we're... Uh, as long as she's happy with what we're doing, let's not you know, rock the boat and uh, get them broiled into more wars because we have orcs to take care of. Oh, it looks like Avalan's going to siege Akendorf, but that's perfectly fine. In fact, uh, as long as the, uh, as long as Akendorf is held by humans instead of orcs, uh, that'll be decent for our vast. And how do you feel about us, by the way? Improving to 24 now. Uh, you liked all the stuff that we did with regards to uh, uh, joining you against wars and the treaties, although I feel like that should be even more. Uh, you don't appreciate our treaties with Red Eye or the Lamian Sisterhood, but I do imagine that Red Eye will eventually break their treaty with us, because they don't like us by virtue of the fact that uh, we have treaties with Karazakarak. Uh, and then Alami and Sisterhood, well, there's not much we can do about that. I also still don't understand why Khalid al-Muntazir is the... Uh, to welcome a fellow lord of the night to my domain. Hush. Is the uh, leader of the Lami and Sisterhood? Confusing. Very confusing. Uh, oh, damn. <laughs> I was hoping that we could vassalize him or uh, uh, force him to join our confederation, and I don't think he will, although, wait. If we offer him 75, th I'm not going to offer him all of our cash because we need it. I'm just curious. Oh, yeah, we could. Uh, we absolutely could. How many? Ter he only has the two territories, though. Uh, the Silver Pinnacle and, I take it, the other little territory here. The problem is we probably won't be able to defend it. I will go and take those territories afterwards. Wait, he doesn't even have this territory. He has another territory somewhere else. Yeah, well, and plus 20 means that there's a rebellion here and his armies are gone. You know what? I do want to take the Silver Pinnacle, but I don't think they off the actual faction offers us much, so it's uh, it's not a huge deal. Uh, let's see. Otherwise, do we have anything that we really want to upgrade right now? I do want to get that wall up in, uh, in Fort Obersteyr ASAP. Do we want the Lich Yard at Castle Templehof? It'll give us a little bit more growth, but I feel like it's not worth a 3,000 investment. And same with you. Honestly, I'm kind of tempted to just replace you with a Gibbet instead. Uh, wait, let me just check buildings here. So, Gibbet will give us more public order and more money, but no amount of growth. Uh, reduction of public penalties. Da, 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 da. We do need Balefire Braziers, but we'll work on that later. We need to buff up the, uh, the home province at first. Alrighty, well, I think we'll just keep it as it is. We definitely... Ooh, growth is at 169 here. Not too bad. Uh, can't wait to get you to level 3 and thereby uh, increase the gold mine further and even make more money. 
Also, I just want to double check here. What do we have for raised dead? Hmm. We could put you back into necromantic ritual stance and summon some more dead next turn. We do. I feel like we do want more dead after all, because uh, there's another. There's another issue. We don't want to appear weak in the sense that we don't want other factions to see that uh, we're weak and thereby declare war on us by virtue of that. And that happens when all of your armies die like this. So I don't really want to risk that. Hmm. Also, I just want to double check here. So Vlad gives buffs uh, to Blood Knights, and that's about it. Okay. I just wanted to double check that he did not buff Vargeists like uh, like Isabella does, because the Vargeists are going to go into her army eventually, which means we don't need to move through his red line buffs for them. Uh, we'll have to figure out what we do with his specific red line buffs besides... Uh, uh, besides the Waking Dead, which is the various Blood Dragon... I mean, he'll... <sighs> The thing is, we're going to get the Red Duke as well, and he's definitely going to have a Blood Dragon army. And then we're probably going to get at least one Blood Dragon Lord. Uh, and I don't want armies to be too similar to each other. Hmm. Although the Blood Knights are really fun. Okay, we'll have to we'll have to figure this out as we go on. Though there's a it's it's a long time till we get to it. You know what? Let's raise a couple dead. I think uh, just a couple. Oh, and we should probably we get these guys going in right now? You know what? Let's let's get them right now, just in case these guys march. Uh, recruit. Oh, actually, no. We should have gotten them right now. Yeah, because this place is going to rebel, and then they might immediately siege. Yeah, okay. You guys can defend this. And 520 to get some zombies in there, but I think we prefer to raise dead. Do you need more zombies in Zephbar? Like, it's definitely not going to be able to hold against the full stack, even of Gobbos. I'd like... You know what? Let's get at least a couple zombies in there, and then we'll uh, we'll see afterwards. Ooh, or do we get a couple of skeleton spears? They're not all that much more expensive. It's just the uh, the raised dead cost is a little bit much on them. You know, let's get a couple zombies and then one skeleton spear unit. I don't want to. I don't want to go overboard either. We're at four sixty two now. We got to remember that our uh, our money will drop. Yeah, just get. Uh, but one unit of skeleton spears. Alrighty, I'm reasonably happy with that. Vlad, you can raise some zombies as well. Uh, like so. Oh, this is technically the same province, isn't it? But you're beside the uh, battle marker and he is not yet. Yeah, just get a couple more zombies in there, and then, regardless of the attrition, and then. Unassigned skill points on Melissa Rotep. What do we have for you? Oh, I haven't decided which one of these lines to go through. I'm still tempted to go through Seduction of the Lamians, but you're more of a uh, battle lord. Hmm. Also, you know what? Let's give the... Uh, while we're at it. Uh, Isabella, you can carry the Empire Spy for now. We're going to give it to another Lord later. But like a defensive Lord, but... Uh, uh, or maybe... Oh, wait. Can you guys carry Vampire Spies? No, you can't. So only Lords can. Okay, which is interesting. Oh, wait. Income from all buildings. Warpstone Hunter is on Vlad. That should really be on Katrina Von... Rock. Okay, well, we already have one on Katrina. Yeah, that's fine then. Uh, that is fine. I'm just double checking that I'm not uh, not forgetting anything here, and it doesn't look like it. Do we have any extra items? Huh? Haven't been stealing as many items lately, unfortunately. Uh, but you have a Dawnstone. Wait, uh, let's give that to Isabella. Oh, you have a Dragon Bane gem. No, Dawnstone is obviously much better, and we'll get the uh, Warrior Bane as well, which will combine with your Master of Beguilement to uh, make it, make sure that you're a little bit more tanky. Uh, there we go. And you, yeah, I still haven't decided what to do about this. Most likely, either Blood of the Ancients or Martial Practice of the Blood Dragons. Increase your damage versus increase... Well, this is kind of interesting, because this directly increases damage via armor piercing, plus 45, but also gives melee defense, which is very valuable, especially for vampires. This, however, gives the speed, which will also help out when you're on your Hellsteed, but then again, you're also already so fast on your Hellsteed that really, the main benefit of this will probably be the melee attack. Hmm. I definitely gotta think about this. If you, if you didn't have an army trait, I would absolutely just go for Seduction of the Lamians and just increase that over and over and over again on various vampire uh, heroes. In fact, wait, can we recruit vampire heroes yet? No. We actually do need the building. I just wanted to double check that nothing unlocked direct recruitment of them. Alrighty, we'll skip that then. Set on to upgrade available. Uh, I don't care about that. Uh, let's see, unassigned skill points on Isabella. We just checked that. And I guess with that, we end the turn and we see what uh, everybody else does. Let's get to it. Population surplus in Zephbar. Karazakarak, 
Well, they, they haven't left us yet. Uh, War declared the Bloody Hands and Clan Angrund. Uh, let's see if we can't get uh, friendly with Clan Angrund. Oh, let me guess, Farrakh wants peace. We're not going to do that. Uh, we definitely have a source of uh, sacking all this. Oh, and their army got uh, got intercepted. Well, let's auto-resolve that and let's take that cat. Oh, wow, 400 cash. Basically not even worth it, but I'm going to take it anyway. Because we clearly need the cash. All right, and the Bloody Spears are also probably coming. All right, raiding. Yeah, they are in our territory. They are in our territory, so um, our dear friend uh, Dieter over here is definitely going to have to defend next turn. Do we need to summon more zombies? I mean... Always use more zombies here. Not worth it to get the Mornfangs. Yeah, you got a trait, buddy. Uh, Night Shroud, Sword of Cain claim. Correct, Kadrin has been damaged by the Rebellion. And let's see, Imminent Rebellion, yada, yada, yada. Uh, let's see. You're going to repair. Well, I guess the doors have to be gone before you repair. That's fine. Uh, Isabel, can you reach us in one move? Yes, you can. Okay, we're going to delete that. I do, however, want to summon the Dire Pack for you because you do buff the... Uh, uh, the Felbats and Direwolves considerably, so you might as well carry the special unit. We should also... I mean, honestly, basically all of the elite units of Vlad's army are going to go to you <laughs> soon. Uh, the Dire... Well, well elite, quote-unquote. Basically anything that's not zombies or skeletons. But anyway, uh, you attack this. Hopefully that'll level you up. I think we can auto-resolve this, because there is a garrison in Karakadrin as well. Uh, yeah, decisive victory, no losses. That's fine. And then you can take another 600 money. Beautiful. And that should level you up to level 12 as well. Uh, this place is going to keep rebelling yet again, but that's fine. And that is absolutely... Can we untax you? You know what? Let's untax you for one turn. I know it'll cause a loss, but I do want Isabella to move out here and sack Kragmir again. Uh, Zufbar, you are also ready to start upgrading, so we're definitely going to do that. Uh, how close are we to upgrading this? Ah, still pretty far. Still pretty far. Waldenhof and Eschen. We also want to upgrade you, but not at the cost of uh, not a cost of Drakenhof. Uh, Fort Oberstar is almost ready, so we will be able to get that Graveguard Watch House in there, and that'll be a lot of our cash. Uh, I do want to do this. Let's see you, uh, Katrina von Drake. Oh, or should we do this with Vlad? The thing is, if we do this with uh, Katrina, ooh, wait, no, I have an idea. You are gonna tax, and you're gonna rebel. You are gonna stay right here. Let it rebel in two turns, that's fine. Because if we move Vlad right now, regardless of the fact that he won't get a level... Yeah, okay, let's do this. Uh, you, Katrina, you're gonna attack this, you're gonna sack it. Auto resolve, please. No losses. And then, we are going to sack it again, just for the XP and stuff. Potion of Foolhardiness and free items. It's always nice. Eh. If only that had gone to 10k. Uh, oh, hello! Oh, we can get Vargulfs immediately. 374 is actually not too bad uh, for a Vargulf to anchor the line. I am kind of tempted to get that in there. Hmm. Only didn't cost so much. But it's not as much as a Lord. It would be nice to have a Bat Hulk, especially since we killed Manfred's Bat Hulk. Poor Bat Hulk. 374, eh? 374. You know what? Let's get one. Let's get one. Because as I said, we are going to give the Dire Wolves and the uh, Vargeists to Isabella. And she is doing her own thing right now. Alrighty then. Uh, let's get to you that bad Hulk. Raise the dead. Recruit. Ooh. Okay, here's where we can check. If we put you in demonic. Or in demonic. Vampiric or necromantic ritual. Can you summon and then go back to normal movement stance? Let's see. Uh, there we go. 374 cost reduced. We're negative now, but it is what is NK. And then you can go back. Okay, that's that's lovely. That's lovely. You start marching. March all the way to Kragmir, which you're going to sack next. <laughs> and we're just going to keep doing this. Uh, you have been reduced in strength as well. Let's move you back to this territory. Move. We could have also raided, but I want you to heal to full. And let's see, you got Innocence lost now, although... I am tempted to just go through Unliving Host and buff up your zombies, because... Well, Seduction is actually pretty good. You know what, let's get Seduction first. Always get Seduction first, people. And then we'll, uh, we'll deal with that after. Now, your recruitment cost is 520 for zombies, and your raised dead cost, cost is 496, so we can just uh, a ritual up next turn and then hit Karak Dromar for another sack again. Uh, Vlad's going to do the same at Kragmir, and you're defending here. Alrighty, how's our rep with the dwarfs looking now? Moving up to 27, very nice. Very, very nice. I'd really like to get some sort of agreements or not agreements, or something else going with them. Uh, who are they also at war with? Uh, Skullcrag, Undiscovered Faction, Bloody Spears, Red Fangs. Let's see. 
Your demands. Wait, they're not actually at war with Clan Ferric? That's kind of funny. Uh, do this. There we go. That'll actually help increase our reputation even further. And then... We could join war... Well, not against the Bloody Hands. Skullcrag. Hi. Let's see if they get, give us money for this. 800. Moderate. 1300. Still moderate. 1800. Low. Alright, let's see if they'll give us 1300 cash for this. Ah, oh, damn. Uh, join war. I just want the extra rep with them, so that they never leave us. We gotta get that, uh, gotta get, gotta get that in a good place. And we also really need another blood kiss so that we can reset our, uh, reputation with them, because the, like, that's what's countering the aversion right now. Uh, without it, it's gonna start dropping to negative again. Uh, well then, let's get 800 on, so it's not that much, but it'll be extra rep. Go on, there you go. There you go. Whoever that is, we're now fighting them. I uh, hope you appreciate that, dwarfs. Alrighty, what else do we have here? And how are we for time, by the way? Ooh, wow, we are quickly running out of time. Damn, I lose track of time in this campaign. It's just too damn fun. Uh, alrighty, well, Isabella... Oh, you are so close to rank 12, but you're just not quite there. Uh, Melissa Ratapia. Yeah, that's another reason why I feel like maybe we should go uh, Seduction of the Lion. Let's get another point in there, and at least it's a little bit more research. Speaking of research, feels like it's been a long damn time since we got this. Ooh, also... Does the Lamian Book of Blood... Aha, diplomatic relationships with all factions. You know what? Maybe we'll go through through the rest of this and get infiltrate noble houses first. And I know that I did want the upkeep for zombies. Man, you know what? Maybe upkeep for zombies first and then that. Although 15 turns is a long time, whereas this will take... Oh, 28. Yeah, just keep going blood is power for now, then probably go through the zombie stuff. It'll make it a lot easier to defend. We'll ignore the skeleton stuff for now. Attrition suffered, Lord Recruit rank, leadership for direwolves and fell bats. I'm just double checking if there's anything here that's really good early on. Well, you know what? Diplomatic relationships with Vampire Coast and uh, Vampire Counts is useful. Double experience gain when fighting against Vampire... What? Why would we double experience... Okay, whatever. Shouldn't we double experience gain when fighting their enemies instead? Uh, well, guess not. I'm just double checking if there's anything else we need to build this turn. It wasn't the four to. Oh, no, it's next turn. Alright. Let's skip the rest of this. Uh, skip the settlement upgrade and the turn. We're just about have done for this episode, but uh, uh, if these guys want to siege us, I'm perfectly willing. Ooh, I should have probably summoned some more stuff. Oh, well, too late. If they attack, they attack, and we'll, uh, we'll hopefully deal with it. Although, I, I feel like we'll probably make the siege a cinematic battle, so if they do attack, we'll, uh, we'll fight it next episode. They'll probably siege us, but if they do, Vlad is nearby. Yeah, they'll just siege us. Vlad is going to come here, and he can take Grom big. So I think that's perfectly fine. Alrighty, recruit the following hero, Vampire. You know, we would if we could. Uh, I would absolutely love to recruit a Vampire. Ooh, there we go. Our money just went up because our tarnished gold mine is now finished. Beautiful. Rebellion at Zufbar. That's all fine. Settlement besieged Zufbar as well. Karakadrin is about to rebel as well. I'm actually kind of tempted to raid our own territory here. Oh, wait, that actually reduces it. Uh... Well then, you could go back into Waldenhof for at least one turn. That'll force this place to rebel, because the characters are not here providing the public order. There we go, that's better. Do that. Shocked that uh, nobody's, you know, capitalized on Nashrax Lair being uh, easily takeable here. Uh, so if you were to attack this guy... Yeah, the question is, will these guys attack next turn or not? Do we sack Kragmir right now or not? I mean, it sounds like it's going to be able to defend itself very well. Uh, this guy's rebuilding an army. No point! No point, eh? Yeah, so there's the question. Do we get more uh, get more of these guys going? Hmm. A necromantic ritual, I guess. Yes, Neferato was right. Neferato was right. Uh, get some zombies in here. Will you be able to take this? I feel like maybe not. It really depends on if the enemies are at full, uh, full HP or not. I'd really love to sack this one more time. You know what, let's try to get the zombies in here. We can always put you back into Schwarzhaven. We can always delete the zombies later if we really feel like it. And this gives us some amount. Okay, then you start moving here. And then you can summon more zombies. Aha! We can get a corpse heart. Uh, corpse cart with Balefire Brazier. You know what, this is pretty worth it, actually. Uh, it'll certainly help the zombies with, the, with its aura. Hmm... Wait, no, this is Balefire Brazier, not on Holy Lodestone. It has the damaging aura. No, it still has the Vigor Mortis aura. Uh, Balefire just reduces magic recharge rate and effect. Da, 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 da. We don't actually care that much about that. I really would have preferred an unholy Lodestone. Oh, well. 
you know what? I'm still going to summon this. I do want the extra... I mean, Vigor Mortis does significantly buff zombies, even though it was only the ones that are closed up or close by it. Uh, but uh, powering up the tithe will make it considerably more powerful. Well, obviously, uh, more powerful. Uh, let's get one more zombie, let's say. And I don't want to cripple our upkeep. You know what? Two more zombies. Let's see if this is enough. And then leave Necromantic Ritual. Let's see if this is enough to sack this place again and uh, make everybody else uh, continue to be happy with us. Uh, Pyrrhic Victory. We will not lose anybody. Beautiful. There's obviously no need to fight this. Uh, we'll do that in a second. I just want to see. What do we have here? Oh, we don't have Blood Kisses for any of this anyway. We don't need to find a Legendary Lord to kill. Uh, auto Resolve this, please. And then sack it and move back to where you came from. Sack. Free XP. Hey, you got a grave digger as well. Could have used that before we summon stuff, but it is what it is. Uh, and yeah. then you can't go. Yeah, fine. Yes, Just go into channeling stance and then move here, I guess. Heal up and then do your thing. Uh, Vlad, do you want to attack this guy? Do you want to sack Kragmir? I feel like we attack this guy and we'll go back and sack Kragmir. Oh, although Kragmir is on the way for Zephyr. The only thing is these these guys are probably building towers and walls. Ooh, and they do have some biggins. Hmm. What did I get in here, by the way? Two zombies, one skeleton spear, a couple of Sylvanian crossbows. Ah, uh, I hope I don't regret this. Let's try, let's do this. Let's do this. Alright, so you're gonna sack it again. More XP after all. Auto resolve, please. <laughs> oh, Clan Ferric. The annoying thing about this, though, is that eventually the dwarves will most likely say, okay, you know what, let's jump in and let's attack these guys, i.e. let's take these free territories, uh, as soon as they're not fighting everybody at their borders. Oh, they're fighting the Bloody Hands now as well, so that's going to be a problem for them. Hey, they've retaken the Pillars of Grugni, and Burundan Oathkeeper, where the hell is uh, Thorgrim? Hey, your army's a little bit better than it was before, and now you can take... well, damn. We could raise Grand Peak instead of taking it for ourselves, allow them to maybe retake it at some point. Hmm, might be worthwhile. We will see. We will see. How do you guys like us now? 14? <laughs> I just want to see if there's anybody else that likes us enough to trade with us. Aberlan, you could actually trade. Uh, I'm willing to bet that Draika won't like that very much, though. Uh, you like the treaties with the Wargrove of Woe? Huh, you don't you don't think anything one way or another about the treaties with the Wargrove of Woe. Talabekland doesn't like it, and I'm willing to bet Stirland hates it. Huh, but if Averlan wants to trade with us. Approach us friend trade agreement? And make your offer. No, no. No. We could do a non-aggression pack, but do we really want to? <laughs> That's the question. I mean we could go after them while we kill Stirland. Uh I'd really prefer the trade to the non-aggression for now. Yeah. Right. Yep. Well, I just misclicked that, so now we have a non-aggression pack. Well, whatever, that'll get our rep up with them even further, and then maybe we'll trade. They are bordering us, after all, and uh, always betray them later, after all. <laughs> Let's see if Dreykov feels anything about that. No, it doesn't look like it. Oh, she doesn't like the treaties with Karaza, correct? I'm just, I'm just keeping an eye on whether she loses her army or not, because the balance of power is uh, still, uh, well, not in her favor, but very much... Uh, uh, very much not super in our favor. What if she, if she sallies out and loses her Red army Sigma. to Sterling? We might be able to vassalize Draika as well, which would be really lovely. Uh, that would all be pretty great. Ooh, alrighty. Let's also then upgrade, I guess, Waldenhof. Uh, no, way, not Waldenhof. We need to save for Castle Drakenhof. What the hell am I talking about? Let's get the wall up in Fort Oberstar instead, regardless of the ludicrously expensive cost. Ooh, no. We're going to do that next turn because you can move in here and reduce that cost. Not by much, but... Uh, but enough. And we will be able to get another building here. I feel like we're not going to go with the Balefire Braziers yet. We will replace some buildings with them later on. But let's get the yeah, let's get the gibbet or gibbet rather now, <laughs> and uh, increase the amount of cash that we're making even further. Alrighty. Well, with that, unfortunately, we are out of time, and I am going to have to call this episode here. Uh, we did. Did we get another level up on you? Yes, we did. We have covered up on death. Uh, mesmerizing or monstrous strength. Let's get monstrous strength. I like the uh, uh, the free contact effects. And ooh, wait, we can recruit our white kings. Yeah, we can if we really want to. Oh, there's another lore keeper here. Do we really want a lore keeper white king though? Hmm. I'll think about this. They're not too expensive, fortunately, in terms of their upkeep. So it's not too bad. And strong isn't too bad either, especially if we use one as a fighter. Hmm. I wonder what their uh, their line looks like. You know what, maybe we'll get this guy. 
Get this guy in here. We do have to also recruit a vampire, but unfortunately not yet able to. We'll uh, work on that as we go. Anyway, as I said, calling it. Uh, next time we will... Wait. And I'll do this next time. <laughs> I'll apply the uh, points. And next time we'll throw uh, these uh, orcs back. Hopefully they don't attack next turn, in which case it'll be much more problematic to defend Zephbar, but I'm willing to bet that they might. Just by virtue of the fact that they can see Vlad here and they know that he will uh, obliterate their army if he gets there. Then we'll march up here, take Grand Peak or otherwise raise or sack it. Maybe we'll sack it and then raise it after. Uh, just like uh, have uh, Dieter follow along and deal with that. And just like we've been doing with the rest of our vampires, like Katrina will keep uh, sacking Karak Dromar, and then Vlad will keep sacking Kragmir, and then uh, Isabella will keep dealing with the rebellions at Karak Kadrin, all of which together will allow us to uh, level up all of our lords and hopefully build reasonably tall. Uh, we will have to figure out a place to advance, but I think that'll be a problem for next time. So with that said, as always, I do appreciate any and all feedback with regards to the gameplay or the way I do things on this channel. Uh, don't forget to leave a like and comment for your friendly neighborhood heretic. All glory to the algorithm, and thanks for watching.